No mai haere mai, kia ora koutou katara and welcome to Logan Park in Otipoti, Dunedin for coverage of this New Zealand Football Southern League clash between hosts the Dunedin City Royals and the visitors Kashmir Technical from Christchurch with the top two Southern League teams progressing through to the National League Championship Kashmir Technical are sitting pretty in second spot and they need only a point today to book a top two spot to join Christchurch United in the National League but as Lloyd Christmas would say to the Royals, so you're telling me there's a chance. If they can manage a win today, they still have the slimmest of chances of pipping Kashmir Tech into second spot. Looking at the visiting lineup for Kashmir Technical today, they're missing their experienced goalkeeper, Danny Knight. So 17 year old stopper Matt Ford is between the sticks. They have an experienced defensive duo in Andrew Storer and Tom Schwartz. And well, number 10, Garvin Coughlin is the absolute danger man in their lineup. He's scored an incredible 24 goals in just 14 league matches. He's a familiar face to plenty of people down south here, having previously played for Southern United. And we'll have a look at the home team lineup, the Dunedin City Royals. And they've also got a teenager in goals, but Alex Boomer has played every minute for them this season. They are missing their influential top scorer, Ben Stanley, with youngster Will Turner coming in. They'll be looking to their most senior player today, Connor Neal, to step up and add to his 10 Southern League goals so far this season. And they're captained by Ollie Peterson in the middle of the park. The Royals have kept a very consistent lineup throughout the season. In fact, Nine of their squad have played either 14 or all 15 matches so far, but yeah, Ben Stanley could be a, a loss today. He's racked up 11 goals. There's two teams aren't too far away from kickoff. The Dunedin City Royals in their all sky blue kit there. Kashmir Technical in their familiar yellow shirts. Pleasant enough day down here in Dunedin. It's uh, Probably a wee bit chilly for summer. High forecast of only around 11 or 12 degrees. Could even be a little bit of rain at some point. But to be honest, it's pretty good conditions for football. Not too much of a breeze here at the moment. And yeah, there's just so much to play for here. The Royals will be throwing everything at their opponents today to try and have a crack at that National League spot. So it's bound to be an entertaining match. My name's Morgan Jarvis and I'm excited to be commentating today's match between two of the South Island's top clubs. The Royals have had a really good season, although just when they were looking really good about the midway point, they had a wee bit of a dip in form that has left them a few points off the pace that the two Christchurch powerhouse teams have set. They do come into this match on the back of a wonderful 7-0 away win over FC 20. And they did also manage to an upset win over Kashmir Technical back in June. So that will give them some confidence heading into this one, that's for sure. But Kashmir Technical have certainly had a strong season with just a couple of losses. And yeah, well, striker Garvin Coughlin leading the way with an incredible 24 goals in 14 matches. He's, I think, at least seven points clear of anybody else across the three regional National Leagues in terms of the Golden Boot Charts. So we're very close to kickoff. It'll be the Royals playing from left to right, but it will be the visitors, Kashmir Technical, to get things underway soon. Referee today, experienced Corey Mills. He has Alice Clipsum and Nick Brown assisting him on the sideline. Caleb Marsh is the fourth official today. Got a top quality turf here at Logan Park. There'll be some fast, frantic football. Of course, just uh, really about a about a nine iron away from Forsyth Bar Stadium, which hosted six spectacular games in the 
FIFA Women's World Cup. What a tournament that's been so far. So it'll be Kashmir Technicals, Garvin Coughlin to get things underway. Joining him in the lineup today in the number nine shirt there, Aidan Barber Ryan, who is another player familiar to football fans in Dunedin, having played for Southern United a few years back. And of course, the super experienced centre back for Kashmir Technical, Tom Schwartz, began his New Zealand football journey down in Dunedin for Cavisham a few years back now. Expected to be keenly contested in the middle of the park today and a few danger players out wide for both sides and it's Coughlin here drifting wide. Now yeah, swing it out left to McIsaac. Drops it in to Yuya Taguchi in the 11 shirt for Kashmir Technical. Just his second appearance, I believe, in the Southern League for him this season. Of course, famous with Kashmir Technical fans for scoring a couple of goals in the Chatham Cup final a couple of years back and picking up the Jack Betty Memorial Cup. So he could certainly be a danger man today as well. Young keeper Matt Ford with early touch, but only gets it as far as Connor Neal. Braden Fowl down the right flank, but turns it over to McIsaac, who looks to unleash Coughlin and just about gets in behind, but Royals deal with it well for now at least. Isaac just about kept that one in, but not quite. Chance for everyone just to catch their breath. Just have to excuse that the camera today set up quite close to the edge of the pitch, so can't quite catch some of the action right on the touchline there. It'll be Kashmir Technical. With a throw in here and chipped forward to Coughlin, who's had a little bit of space initially before he was quickly closed down. And a free kick awarded there for a foul on Taguchi. Taken quickly by Lyle Matheson. An offside flag going up there. Rules go long, and so maybe another free kick awarded there. Danny Kane just getting knocked over. Pressure across the park here from Kashmir Technical, not allowing the Royals to settle too much. And look at the hustle there and putting a bit of pressure on the Royals. And that ball just about left short from Collings, but back with Kashmir Tech now. Luke Tung in the 32 shirt battling away, but this time it's the Royals that'll pick up a free kick. Another strong challenge coming in there from Tung. Barbara Ryan, strong and he's so quick. Loves to dribble with the ball and Coughlin, well, he loves to have a shot at goal. That one was blocked.
cut out there by Hayden Ace. Clever turn there from Oban Hawkins. But turned over, and is that Schwartz having a go from long range? And well, it's well wide of goal, but good intent there. Tom Schwartz certainly uh, has picked up a few goals over the years for Cashmere Technical and Canterbury United, but not too many from that kind of range. Recently brought up his 300th appearance for Cashmere Technical earlier this season, plus well over 150 games for Canterbury United. Been a brilliant stalwart Canterbury football over the last decade. Again, taken quickly by Cashmere Tech and Matheson lays it in and, well, nicely cut out. Connor Neal working hard there defensively, but good opportunity here for the visitors with an early corner. Look for the uh, big centre-backs, Dora and Schwartz, to try and wreak havoc in the six-yard box. Swung in towards the near post, and Coughlin keeps it alive. Well, clear a goal there, so... 19-year-old goalkeeper for the Royals, Alex Boomer. Settle things down with a goal kick. Haven't spent much time down in the opposing half so far in the opening few minutes of this match. Barbara Ryan again with plenty of space to turn and looks up and, well, unleashed to Gucci. But now... The Royals perhaps with a chance to counter through Will Turner. Advances with the ball. Technical getting a few players back. A cross coming in, could be a dangerous one. And well, Connor Neal had got himself into a good position there at the far post. Just a bit awkward for him to get a shot on target though. But encouraging signs there finally for the Royals. Watanabe putting a bit of pressure there on Stora and could result in a chance here for the Royals. McTung doing enough there to win the ball back. Coughlin sends that one out into the pocket and could be an awkward one. And strong play there. And Barbara Ryan sends it across. And nicely done. Oh, from Lowell Matheson there. But Boomer will be very relieved that it was straight to him and not too much power in the shot either. That was a big chance for Technical to open the scoring. It's only been a good positive start to the match by both teams and Kashmir Tech in particular looking like they're here to rack up another win and book that spot in the National League Championship. Which will see the best two teams from the Southern League go up against the best from the Northern League and Central League. Can't wait for that. Coughlin dropping very deep, but linking up nicely with Barbara Ryan with a fantastic turn. He'll love playing on the turf. And he has a bit of space again. Will he look to have a shot instead? There's a one-two. Plenty of movement from, uh, from the Kashmir Technical attacking players. They're moving across the park and looking for pockets of space and frustration there for the Royals with Captain Ollie Peterson conceding a free kick. 
again, taken quickly by Kashmir Technical, launched into the box, but too quickly for the referee's liking to the relief of the Royals because Coughlin looked like he tucked that one away nicely. There's no better marksman going around the country at the moment than the Irishman. Might be another free kick, the foul on Coughlin, and a bit of frustration there from the home team. Referee Corey Mills just having a chat to Peterson, the captain, and he's just trying to calm things down himself, just get a bit of composure for his team. Have just been a bit on the back foot here. Plenty of players forward here, it's Luke Tung who take the free kick. Bit of an awkward position, very centrally, but fine store and kept alive here and Royals just about scramble it clear. And Hawkins, oh, sliding challenge coming in from Schwartz and he's claiming he got the ball, but certainly slid in quite dangerously. And the referee just trying to calm things down a wee bit. Tell just how much is at stake in this match. Well, I think that's fair enough from the referee just trying to calm things down a bit. Does give the Royals a chance to launch one in towards the penalty box, although <laughs> Collings just being pelted to go back a bit further, but now foul linking up with Connor Neal, and foul continues his run, and he'll get to that one. And kept alive too. Royals looking to try and craft a shot, and nicely and still kept alive. Can Hawkins find some space? Catch me technical, do enough, and Schwartz advancing down the middle. Real helter skelter nature to the start of this match. Well, should have been easily dealt with, but fouled it well. Schwartz there to mop up. Barbara Ryan again it turns. This Peterson just getting a bit too tight, but they do turn it back over. And what an Abby. Linking up with Hawkins, just like Barbara Ryan, a really good technical player who likes to try and turn and beat a man, dribble into space. And some good matchups across the park already here. Now it's Tom Schwartz just getting a wee bit of a talking to. It's his uh, centre-back partner, Andrew Storer, who wears the captain's armband these days, but there's few more experienced players around than Tom Schwartz. And when he did play his 300th match for the club recently, as foul goes to ground, yeah, I believe Tom Schwartz got to wear the, the captain's armband again in that match, his 300th wear. They had a big 7-0 win over Green Island as well. Collings goes all the way back to Boomer. Look to build up from the back here, the Royals. It's a nice ball to Watanabe who's just dropped into space and linked up with Hawkins. Nice turn there too from Ian Watanabe. Swings it across to the other side. It's Fowl who's been advancing forward a lot from his right fullback position and might try and get himself a corner or even better here. 
Oh, another strong challenge, but Coughlin shows his class and looks to spark something for his side. And Barber Ryan, and he has Matheson with him. Coughlin, look at that, sprays it beautifully out to the right flank. And Taguchi sends it across. Now the cross coming in and not quite dealt with there by Peterson. Coughlin with a clever ball and look at that, hit it in and can't quite get it on target there. Matheson, that's a relief for the Royals. It's a big chance, beautiful play from Garvin Coughlin showing that he's not just about scoring goals, he's just as good at creating them. Nice play there from Hawkins showing his skill. Of course, a talented futsal player like a few of these players are, but he's played for New Zealand, a long range effort coming in, but not threatening the goal. Seven points currently separating these two teams in second and third spot. And Kashmir Technical have also got a game in hand after they had a game abandoned a couple of weeks back in some horrendous weather conditions. So certainly in the box seat to book a top two spot along with Christchurch United. We'll still have designs on winning the Southern League, I guess. Um, so Christchurch United still unbeaten, but it's technical now with Coughlin with long range effort. I've seen him hit those kind of shots so many times over the years, but that one didn't trouble Boomer. Gavin Coughlin has scored in his last seven consecutive Southern League matches and <laughs> remarkably has scored four goals in a match on four separate occasions this season. Not sure if there's an official term properly recognised around the world for four goals in a match, but there might need to be. I have to call it a Garvin. The last time that he didn't score in the Southern League was, I believe, in the last time these two teams met up in Christchurch. And yeah, the, the Royals picked up a fantastic 3-2 win on the road on that occasion back in June. It's Matheson dropping a bit deeper. Danny Kane out with Richards and then now sends it forward. Barbara Ryan trying to beat his man, but Cooper did enough. Peterson showing his strength for the Royals in the middle of the park. It's a big physical presence for them, but still technical with the ball. Stora, the captain for Cashmere Technical, but that one's cut out and the Royals will be able to advance over the halfway line, but beautifully cut out there by McIsaac, and he has numbers forward, including Coughlin, who he tries to find, but good, strong challenge coming in from Jeff Collins. Needed to time that one right, and he did. That's the Royals through Watanabe. He doesn't have a lot of support, but finds Connor Neal. Nice turn, and gets across the, the box, and will be a corner for the Royals. 
their first of the match. So almost 20 minutes in here in the Southern League clash from Logan Park and Dunedin. No goals as yet, but both teams playing with a positive intent. Cashmere Technical in particular creating a couple of good chances, but it's the Royals with a chance from a corner here. And it's Hayden Oish who swings it in. Cashmere has certainly got some tall timber back there to deal with those kind of set pieces. They'll look to spark a counter here and Coughlin with a clever flick through to the pace of Barbara Ryan. Gets in behind, gets a shot on target and they get another chance and goal opens up for Luke Tang and he opens the scoring. What a brilliant counter attack from Kashmir Technical. They've controlled a lot of the play so far but on this occasion it's a counter attack from the Royals corner and Coughlin with a great ball to Barbara Ryan is a powerful shot. Boomer did well to save it, but good composure there from Barbara Ryan to set up an easy finish for Luke Tung. Just needed to compose himself, and he did. And he puts Kashmir Technical 1 0 up. 20 minutes in. What a nicely taken goal. Clinical counter attack from Kashmir Technical and just shows some of the electric pace that they have up front and once again it was Coughlin who well, might not get the assist next to his name but it was a great ball that set Aidan Barber Ryan free and he used his pace to get him behind Boomer with a strong save but could only parry it back towards Barber Ryan and Tang with a good run downfield to finish it off. I believe that would be Luke Tung's first Southern League goal of the season actually, so taken taken a few matches, but he's such a key player for them in the middle of the park. English born midfielder who did spend some time with the Wellington Phoenix a few years back, even played an FFA Cup match for them back in 2017. These days a key part of the strong Kashmir technical side. So it's going to be tricky now for uh, the Royals to get back into the match, but they've done it before. They've got a lot of character this side. Coughlin again. Well, for many players, they'd just be lumping the ball downfield, but it always looks like he's playing 4D chess with some of those passes and always looking to create something. Royals will just have to be careful that they don't let frustration overrun them going behind. They are always noted as uh, being, a, being a physical side, although I think I, think I noted that uh, They've had less cards shown to their side than any other team in the in the Southern League, actually. Only 20, 20 cards shown across their 15 matches. 19 yellows and one red. So, yeah, the fewest cards conceded in the Southern League. Tom Schwartz, who actually picked up a red card a few weeks back in their big clash against Christchurch United, that they still managed to claim a draw and which was a great result especially playing a good chunk of the match man down Schwartz again this time the way one two with Taguchi who's been busy in the middle of the park it's 
time cut out by Peterson. Coughlin keeps it in. He surprised even himself on that occasion. <laughs> like eventually does come back. That may be for a free kick actually for a late foul. Quite a bit of experience in this Kashmir technical lineup. Average age of 26. The only player under the age of 23 in the starting 11 is the 17 year old goalkeeper, Matt Ford, who's in today. It's time the Royals get awarded a free kick. Royals don't have anyone matching the experience of a. Coughlin or Schwartz or Storer, but it's a number of players that have played together for a few years now. Got some good combinations in the lineup. Got a nicely balanced midfield trio with Hayden Aish as the sort of sitting midfielder and creativity and dribbling skills of Owen Hawkins, who's part of this attack here. And then, of course, the big captain, Ollie Peterson, who roams box to box, covers a lot of, gra uh, lot of grass. The Royals now looking to swing it into the box. It's a few targets in there, but Stora does well to deal with it. Another chance for the Royals now, and clever cross coming in, and now a shot from Turner, but blocked. Still the Royals. Apply a bit of pressure. Nice composure here. Aish eventually losing out though. Look at Coughlin again. Dropping back, working hard to try and win the ball back. Royals just starting to see a bit more of the possession since they went behind, which I guess is natural. Kashmir Technical will be fairly happy just to soak up a bit of pressure and look to spark some more counters, and that's coolly done by Tom Schwartz back to Ford. Technical now with a bit of space. Coughlin looking to send it through for hard running Jacob Richards. But Royals managed to deal with it. Braden Fell just picking up a knock. I just need a wee bit of attention, so another chance for the players just to. Catch their breath. Almost half an hour gone here in the Southern League clash between Dunedin City Royals and Kashmir Technical. Kashmir Tech taking a one goal lead after 20 minutes. Luke Tung, the gut busting run to finish off a nice counter attack that was sparked by Garvin Coughlin and Aidan Barber Ryan. Braden Fowl, the injured player here, the fullback. One of uh, a number of players that have appeared in all 15 matches for the Dunedin City Royals have had a pretty consistent lineup throughout the season. I count, I count six players in this lineup that have appeared in all 15 matches. A couple more that have played in all but one. And Ben Stanley missing today, who's played in all but one before today. And of course, been their top goal scorer with 11 goals to his name. Scored a couple of absolute crackers throughout the season too. So he's a bit of a big miss for them today.
We're just about to get playback underway here. Players will just have to switch back on. And the early substitution forced the Aaronets. Number 12, Joshua McCarroll, 19 year old, coming on for the Royals. Has made 12 appearances throughout the Southern League season. I think a good number of them off the bench. But big test for him today, having to play an hour of football up against this Kashmir technical lineup. Royals appealing for a free kick, but nothing awarded, and they'll have to watch out here because McCarroll has an early test with Matheson and now Coughlin getting into a dangerous position. He'll look to cut onto his right foot. Instead, goes towards the byline. Clever play. McCarroll goes to ground. He's desperately trying to keep Coughlin away from the ball. Somehow does enough. But just shows the kind of test that he's going to be up against with the likes of Coughlin and Matheson running at him. Royals coming into this game on the back of a 7-0 win against FC 2011, who are the, currently at the at the foot of the table, but it's a confidence-boosting win for the Royals, and they had six different players score in that 7-0 win as well. So plenty of players getting a bit of a confidence boost. A couple of substitutes, youngsters coming on and scoring as well. Awkward one here for McIsaac, but does nicely to send it back to Schwartz. Taguchi, nice ball into Matheson. Barbarine will look to turn. He has a couple of players on him. Royals shut him down this time. Technical win it back though, and Coughlin just about. Getting on to the end of that, but Jed Collins did just enough to shield him off the ball. Good defending there from the young Royals defender. Tom Schwartz getting a long way forward there, trying to win the ball back. Such a popular member of the team. Remember him bursting onto the scene here in Dunedin. Must be going back a good dozen years. I'd imagine when he had at least one season for, for Cavisham when they were the powerhouse team down in, down in Dunedin. But uh, made a big move up to Christchurch and hasn't looked back. Danny Kane here, the fullback for Kashmir Tech, 26 year old, born in Dublin and has represented the Republic of Ireland through all the age group levels, under 15 through to under 21 and appeared in the League of Ireland, played for Cork City and Sligo Rovers. So he's been a great acquisition. Claiming a corner, but it will be a goal kick. Nice crowd building up for this early kickoff over there on the embankment with the ball coming across from Watanabe, but easy for Ford to claim. He hasn't had too much to do so far, the young goalkeeper. Hey, 
Barbara Ryan closely marked the uh, by Aish. Done well to get the ball going for the Royals here. They look to go down the left flank. Hawkins, nice turn, but just be a throw in. Hawkins surveys his options, sends it all the way across here to McCarroll, and oh, Neil will be disappointed he couldn't make a connection with that one. McCarroll and Neil linking up again, and Watanabe claiming a foul, but Schwartz, that was just strong defending. It's no one stronger going around than, than him. Will Turner, a bit of space down the left flank. Looking to take on his marker. Technical happy to get their players back behind the ball here. Force the Royals to break them down. Happy to knock it about patiently here, but they do turn it over. Barbara Ryan, well blocked by Connor Neal. Happy to just thump that one clear, he prevented the counter attack. And again dropping deep and again launching it forward with pinpoint precision. Jacob Richards looks to swing it across dangerously but comfortable enough for Boomer. Once again what a ball from the Irishman. Strong header by Kane but the Royals again send it out the right flank. Connor Neal Looking to get more involved. Watanabe's good playing with his back to goal. Substitute Joshua McCarroll with the throw. And Watanabe again always looking to link up with players. Neil looks to take on as Opposite number, Matheson, and sends a low cross into the box. This time, gee, Turner just about getting on the end of that cross. This time, Coughlin not allowed to turn and pass, and instead it's the Royals through Connor Neal. Nabi dropping deep. Peterson linking up with Hawkins. Chips it in for Watanabe. Appeals for a penalty and the referee. Corey Mills are judging that that's a push from Tung, I think it was, and there didn't look to be a lot in it, but a nudge in the back. They really seemed like hopeful calls. Watanabe did well to get in front of Tung, but there didn't look to be a lot in it. And Luke Tung can't believe that a penalty has been awarded there. But what it means is that Connor Neal, 10 goals already to his name in the Southern League this season, has a chance to equalise for the Royals from the penalty spot. Up against the youngster in goals for Kashmir Technical, Matt Ford. Neil, I've seen him blast a few penalties with Thunderbolt power. What's he going to do here? He does smash it straight down the middle. And it's all level here at Logan Park. Dunedin City Royals getting a goal back. What a great time to score with about five minutes before the halftime break. And 
Well, that's reward really for the confidence that they've been playing with and perhaps Kashmir Technical a little bit guilty of just taking their foot off a wee bit since they took the lead and happy to let the Royals have a bit more of the ball. How do they play it now? Kashmir Technical they'll, might just up the intensity a wee bit again, I think. It looks so dangerous in the opening quarter of an hour. Advantage played. And all the way through to Taguchi. Barbara Ryan sends it across to Matheson. Well, maybe a wee bit, a wee bit unselfish there. Gucci again. This time out to Barbara Ryan who looked to cut onto his right foot. Loves to try and beat his man. Instead sends it out the left and the cross coming in. And awkward one and diving header. Make it hit the crossbar and didn't go across the line. And the Royals looking to scramble it clear and unable to. They finally do. And gee, they'll feel relieved that they kept that one out. Kashmir Technical still on the attack. Yeah, it was a big chance for Kashmir Technical to immediately go back in front. The header from only about five yards out. I don't think Boomer was able to get a touch to it. I think it just smashed against the underside of the crossbar, but safely away from goal for the Royals. Stora with a strong header. Oh, and awkward deflection there. And Matheson, it's deflected, but it's straight into the goal and wasn't quite what he was trying to do, but he'll claim the goal. And they do immediately level the score. Lyle Matheson, I think, smashing it into Joshua McCarroll there, the unfortunate defender who was trying to close him down, but only deflected it, looped past a helpless boomer. And just a couple of minutes after conceding, Kashmir Technical have gone back in front. Lyle Matheson will certainly claim that goal. That'll be his fifth of the Southern League season. Kashmir Technical will have a couple of goals to their name, and Garvin Kovlin hasn't even got on the score sheet yet. So, all of a sudden, they're looking to go into the half time break. A goal up again. What can the Royals do? They'll be, they'll be gutted working so hard to get back into the match, level the scores and just didn't stay that way for long. Danny Kane, nice composure, linking up with Richards. Sent long again, we're seeing a little bit of that from Kashmir Technical but they're always confident that Coughlin can hold the ball up so well and Wins his team a corner here, surely. Oh, it looks like goal kick awarded, so they're claiming that the last touch came off Coughlin. He doesn't believe it, but goal kick for the Royals. Stora, awkward one for him to deal with, and Turner tries to take advantage, but, well, Stora was always going to win the physical battle there.
certainly see what the Royals are trying to do in attack, though, realising that they're probably not going to get too much change out of uh, the long balls into the box, so that's what they, they do here, but there's been some clever cutback, low crosses into the box from out wide from the Royals, trying to get in behind the likes of Schwartz and Storer. Once again, Coughlin does such a good job of wanting the ball and holding it up, waiting for support. There's three blue shirts around him, and this time we'll win a corner. Wonderful hold-up play again from the Irish forward from Limerick, which I think I remember him saying when he headed down to Dunedin was literally the furthest city on the planet, Limerick from Dunedin. Certainly made his mark down south, particularly with Southern United, but such a key player now for Kashmir Technical. Corner comes in and Stora won the header, but couldn't get it on target. Not long to play now in this first half in the Southern League clash. Kashmir Technical looking to take a 2-1 lead into the break. Remember, they only need a point from this match and that should lock up a top two spot in the Southern League, which would confirm a spot in the National League Championship that kicks off in a few weeks' time. Is there one last chance here for the Royals? Once again, easy for Schwartz to deal with. Bread and butter for him. Sean Cooper there trying to advance down the left flank, but Christchurch side wins it back. Once again, happy to go long, looking for Coughlin and Looks like a head clash there. Nothing malicious, but the referee will have to stop the game. It's the Irishman who's come off worse. There was definitely a case of both players trying to win the header. But as is always the way, one player cops it worse than the other. And on this occasion, it's the Kashmir technical forward. Let's hope he's all right to continue because It's been in great form. Just add another minute or two onto additional time in this first half. These two clubs both reasonably new clubs in the in the scheme of things. Kashmir Technical only formed in 2012, just after the Christchurch earthquakes, and Kashmir Wanderers and Walston Tech merged to form Kashmir Technical, and, well, they've had a lot of success since then. Three Chatham Cups over the past decade. 2013, they backed that up in 2014, and got one just post-COVID, the 2021 Chatham Cup. They were knocked out this year, though, in the round of 16 by their great rivals, Christchurch United, who have a semi-final coming up next weekend. And, well, half-time whistle goes from Corey Mills just when the visitors were looking to counter again, but Half time here at Logan Park and Kashmir Technical 2 1 up over the Dunedin City Royals will look to bring you some highlights of the three goals. There's been plenty of action so far. It was Kashmir Technical who took the lead with a brilliant counter attack. Garvin Coughlin setting up Aiden Barber Ryan. His shot saved by Boomer, but nice composure from Barber Ryan to set up Luke Tang. But the Royals 
five minutes before the break. Leveled it up after a penalty. Connor Neal smashing that one home, but just a couple of minutes later, Lyle Matheson firing in a shot. Big deflection off the substitute, Joshua McCarroll, leaving Alex Boomer with no chance. But it's given Kashmir Technical a 2-1 lead at half time. Make yourself a cuppa, but don't go too far away because we'll be back in a few minutes' time with second half action. The fern is a symbolic representation for all New Zealanders and has been reimagined to represent all of football in Aotearoa, New Zealand. A circular shape not only symbolises the round ball used by all those that play the game, but also, and more importantly, represents the strength and infinite connection created by all those that play a part of the game. With each piece of the fern recognising and acknowledging those that make the beautiful game beautiful. The stalk represents our grassroots, our communities, our clubs, our volunteers and our fans. They are the foundation and are at the centre of all we do. The pinna represents our federations across the whole of New Zealand. Our federations guide and protect our clubs and communities, allowing everyone to be heard, to be represented and provide guidance and opportunities at every pathway. One brand identity with regional differentiation. Federations in New Zealand football working together to serve our communities, creating more than a game, creating a sporting whānau where everyone is welcome. We believe in supporting and nurturing our extended sporting whānau, working towards promoting a healthy group activity that kids, parents and friends love. We want everyone to feel invited. It is in our DNA. We are accessible to all. We are football in Aotearoa. We are the beautiful game and we are proud to be the largest sporting whānau in New Zealand. Led to Kashmir Technical's opening goal. Brilliant counter attack, too, where Coughlin fed Barber Ryan. And his initial shot was saved by Alex Boomer, who is on the ball here and calmly looks to link up with Sean Cooper. But Luke Tung was on hand to blast the ball into the net from only five yards out to open the scoring. But Kashmir Technical just dropped their intensity a wee bit after taking the lead and the Royals grew into the game and they equalised after 40 minutes from the penalty spot in what Nabi was fouled by the goal scorer Luke Tang and Connor Neal smashed the penalty straight down the middle but only a couple of minutes later just before the half time break bit of a coach killer for the Royals Technical went back in front. Lyle Matheson having a crack from just outside the box and it took a wicked deflection off the Royal substitute, Joshua McCarroll. And that's how it is at the break, but expect more goals. Both of these teams score the majority of their goals in the second half of matches, including quite a few late goals. So I'm sure there's going to be some more goal mouth action in this one and the Royals really with nothing to lose now desperate to try and get a win and keep themselves in with a slim chance of pipping Kashmir Technical into a top two spot Coughlin putting pressure on Connor Neal Royals frustrated they don't get a free kick out of that, but Coughlin again looking to, well, didn't even connect cleanly with that and still almost set up his teammate Barbara Ryan, but Peterson now for the Royals. Connor Neal chips it in. Watanabe, clever wee flick, but nicely dealt with. Oh, 
Coughlin again with his back to goal. Again, what didn't quite get that one cleanly, but has still created a chance here for his side to push forward. And he'll look to get himself onto the ball here, I think, in a minute. Tongue with a clever ball in, and it's going to be cut back across, and oh, could have been a tricky one there for Boomer, but claimed by the 19-year-old keeper for the Royals. Watanabe doing well to beat Stora to the header on this occasion. Tung driving forward. Real box-to-box -box player and clever play here from Richards up against Collins and defender does enough. Good play there by Jacob Richards, a seven for Kashmir Technical. Wins a corner for his side. And unsurprisingly, five and six, Stora and Schwartz. The SS combination. He's hungry to get on the end of this one. Looped high towards the far post and Schwartz, but good hit of the year. Be a throw this time for Danny Kane, the Irish fullback. to break for the Royals but has to look back and it looks like Kashmir Technical might be looking to reinstate the high press that worked well for them early on in the match great tussle going on there Peterson loses out to McIsaac but free kick conceded by the Kashmir Technical fullback Connor Neal taking on the defenders and looked to link up with Turner who had made a nice run but Barbara Ryan there, skillful on the ball and we know what number 10, Gavin Coughlin can do. Schwartz thumps it long looking for Barbara Ryan. Coughlin with another clever touch and he's back on the ball, looked to beat his man and oh, Bump to ground, almost got sandwiched between a couple of Royals defenders there. Jumps back up to his feet, which is good to see. And trying to take it quickly, but referee Corey Mills just wanting to have a chat to the Royals midfielder, Hayden Ice, who made the challenge. It's been an ever-present thing. He's played every minute for the Royals. The heart of midfield this season. But this good spot for a free kick. Sent towards the far post. Boomer claims it easily though. Look to spark something quick with the technical centre backs out of position. Sean Cooper drives forward. Group Green, all the way up to McCarroll who chips it in. We've bit scrappy here, although once again Coughlin can turn these into genuine chances. Takes on his man, fires in a shot at Boomer, forced into a sharp save. It was a good strike on target from the Irishman. 
Still hasn't got his name on the score sheet today. 24 goals to his name in 14 Southern League matches so far. You'd be a brave man to bet against him getting on the score sheet at some point today. Watanabe sends it across to Sean Cooper. Defender getting a long way forward and looks to find Connor Neal, but Schwartz comfortably works it clear. And once again, Coughlin <laughs> just so good in those situations, although concedes a throw in on this occasion. But Ryan, look, he loves these kind of areas of the field and a bit of space to run into. Links up with Richards. Now Taguchi. Royals do well to get back in behind the ball. Barbara Ryan again looking to turn. Coughlin drifting all around the field. And does well, and that could be another penalty. It's just inside the box. Barbara Ryan. Fouled, may have been McCarroll who took him down there. It was only just inside the box, but that's reward again for Barbara Ryan and his confidence in taking players on. A nice turn. And, yeah, just clattered into from behind by McCarroll. Barbara Ryan, crafty play from the former Southern United player, one of a bunch in this uh, Kashmir technical side. And what did I just say about the number 10 for Kashmir Technical? Hadn't managed to get on the score sheet yet. Well, he won't get a better chance than this to rack up a 25th Southern League goal of the season from the penalty spot up against young Royals keeper Alex Boomer. Big moment for this. It'd be hard for the Royals to get back into the game if Coughlin can... Put this one away. Coughlin composes himself. Sends the keeper the wrong way. Look at that. Easy as that. Converts the penalty and puts Cashby Technical 3 1 up. Gives them a little bit of breathing space here. Garvin Coughlin with his 25th goal of the season. Just his 15th match. Unreal scoring rate. Four separate occasions he's bagged four goals in a match. And he keeps his great run of scoring going. That's now eight consecutive matches where he has bagged at least one. Foul there on Oban Hawkins and might do well to avoid seeing a yellow card here. May have avoided the card, but free kick in a great position for the Royals. Might have to try and be crafty here, though, because how many times have we seen Stora and Schwartz win the headers, but sent in. Cleared by Richards. Can they spark an immediate counter? Yes, and it's, I think Richards is it all the way down the left flank and has a bit of support. Good defensive header, but then Coughlin gets on the end of it, but it's a tame header from him. Royals are 
going to have to be careful with those types of counter-attacks. We saw Kashmir Technical's opening goal coming from a lightning counter-attack. Sent out to McCarroll who swings in a high ball. That's pretty easy for Matt Ford though. And goals today with experienced keeper Danny Knight not in the lineup. By far the youngest player in the visitors lineup today. Matt Ford just 17. Ignore that whistle that's from the turf behind us. Plenty of time still to play in this one. Half an hour of action ahead. Once again, we see Kashmir Technical happy just to sit back a little bit and let the Royals advance forward. Peterson sends it down into the pocket for McCarroll to get onto. Cuts it back to Connor Neal. Looks to take on McIsaac, but the defender did well. Aish, a good calm presence in the middle of the park for the Royals and looks for his options. Connor Neal powers and across. Cooper will keep it in. We'll just have to excuse that uh, we've got the scaffold set up pretty close to the touchline down this near side, but it means we're nice and close to the action. Carol can't link up with Aish. Barbara Ryan playing with great confidence today. Had a feeling he would uh, light up the turf here at Logan Park. Kane, Storish, Schwartz, Tung, just looking to calm things down a wee bit here. Kane. Turns that one over though. Ivan Hawkins looking up for his options. Both teams set up in pretty similar formations today pretty straightforward variants of the 4-3-3 type of formation and it's meant there's a lot of a lot of good matchups across the park and this time it's nicely done by Turner flicking it through to Aish who's driving forward a clever ball across couldn't get it to the feet of Hawkins and then coming in the Carroll cleared it into claims for a penalty but instead Coughlin well he's frustrated He's been called offside on this occasion. Bit of excitement at both ends there. That was encouraging for the Royals. Hayden Aish doing a nice job. Driving down into the attacking third. And this time Hawkins, he's onside and chips it across. But far too close to the keeper. Watanabe just wanted it pulled back a little bit more. And he would have had a great chance. Game opening up a bit, really, and here's Yuya Taguchi. Comes across to Kane. Of course, his namesake's been in the news a bit. Harry making a big transfer by the looks of it. 
EPL kicking off this weekend, kicked off this morning, but plenty of great football action happening closer to home at the moment. The regional leagues all winding down over the next couple of weeks. National League Championship men's and women's commencing soon. And of course, Chatham Cup and Kate Shepherd Cup final uh, semi-final action. I'm calling a Kate Shepherd Cup semi-final tomorrow and then the men's Chatham Cup semi-finals next weekend. So huge matches coming up. Coughlin, a clever turn on the box. Powers in a shot, but well, high of goal. Well, what a brilliant turn on the ball, but couldn't threaten the goal. Hawkins losing out to, to, to Gucci. Nice play by Hawkins and put a bit of pressure on Stora, but nicely dealt with. Mr. Gucci, Coughlin again, dropping deep, but nicely cut out there by Cooper. Peterson now. Neil down the right flank will get on this one. McIsaac with another challenge. Good battle they've had. Watanabe, well, couldn't quite stay on his feet. Got into a good area inside the penalty area. Will Turner wants to take on Barbara Ryan. Hawkins getting more involved and loves to take on his player and keeps that one in. Oh, the, to my mind, and Owen Hawkins as well felt that that stayed in. It's frustrating because that could have been a, a good chance too. Just trying to catch a wee replay of that, and I reckon he kept that one in, but the game goes on. Just about a nutmeg there from Cooper, and he might have just caught Jacob Richards there after getting up off the ground. Free kick for Kashmir Technical. The second half is racing by. See the replay here? Yeah, that's definitely kept in by Hawkins. Such an accomplished futsal player. He knows exactly where the, where the sideline is. Hawkins, a uh, New Zealand futsal representative and certainly starred for the Southern United futsal side in the last few years. I have a feeling the Southern futsal side might have lost the last National League futsal final to Canterbury Dragons. Plenty of talented futsal players on this side of Cook Strait. Or oh, Barbara Ryan trying to get on the end of that one, but Peterson finds a bit of space in the middle. It's getting pretty congested in the middle of the park, and it means there's a bit of space when the teams can look to get it down the field a bit more directly. That's what Schwartz might try and do. Instead, goes out the left flank, Matheson. Coughlin dropping back and wasn't from an offside position. Instead, Matheson has that one cut out by Joshua McCarroll. And in fact, the offside flag may have gone up with against Coughlin.
So the Royals running out of time to try and put a bit of pressure on Kashmir Technical here. Only a point is needed by Kashmir Technical as Hawkins wins a free kick in a good position. A point will book a top two spot in the Southern League for Kashmir Technical and deny the Royals a chance at getting in the National League and they've won a corner here but it's a nasty one in the head for the technical player. It will be a corner for the Royals and Hayden Nash to take it. Look for the likes of Peterson and DeGroot Green to get on the end of this. See it's a short one. Hawkins fires it across and that's not threatening the goal. Billy managed to fire a shot at Matt Ford in the second half. Ford takes his time. Good flick on there. Tung. Great battle up against Daesh. And this time Neil cuts it out. McCarroll goes long again, very long. But comfortable for Matt Ford. Coughlin again doing a great job at holding the ball up. See a substitute there on the 21 shirt for Kashmir Technical, 22 year old Declan Tyndall. Can't keep that one in though. He's made a few appearances, I think, mainly off the bench throughout the season. He's picked up no less than four goals as well. So look for him to try and get on the score sheet for Kashmir Technical. Connor Neal does well, wins the ball. Watanabe wins a free kick, but quickly taken and well read by Yuya Taguchi. Just a second appearance of the season. Here is the substitute tender. We will get on the end of this one. Strong defending, though, from Cooper. So we're going to see another substitution here. Around 20 minutes to play at Logan Park in the Southern League clash. See if we can pick up that substitution. <laughs> if you're not too familiar with the Dunedin City Royals, a fairly new club on the block down here in Dunedin. Formed probably about three years ago now. And, well, an amalgamation between a couple of the biggest clubs in Dunedin football over the last 20 or 30 years. Dunedin Technical and Cavisham have dominated the local football scene for a long time, but now they've joined powers. Here's Coughlin. Oh, look at that. Clever chip, but... Can't find a teammate, but we'll win another corner. And the Royals have 
certainly become the strongest force in the Dunedin football scene, pushing hard this season to try and nab a spot in the National League. They're looking like they're probably just going to miss out, but. Oh, Coughlin just about with a reaction shot getting on the end of Kane's header. Couldn't get it on target though. Hawkins will look to drive forward. Player going down, Tyler Muir in the 17 shirt, another substitute attacking player for the Royals. Coughlin can't quite keep that one in. Tyler Muir has bagged three goals in the Southern League this season and famously was top scorer in last year's Chatham Cup. Scored 10 goals for Northern, another Dunedin club. Remarkably, he only played three matches. Hawkins looks to go past Kane, but great defending and wins a free kick. Nicely done by the experienced Irishman in the right fullback position for Kashmir Technical. Hope you're enjoying coverage of the Southern League clash being broadcast around the country and around the world from Logan Park in Dunedin. So much live action coming up over the next few weeks. National League, we've got Kate Shepherd Cup semi-finals tomorrow, Chatham Cup semi-finals next weekend. It's all happening. Coughlin again somehow wins the header. Schwartz chips it down the left flank. Offside flag against Aidan Barber Ryan, who hasn't got his name on the score sheet today, but I guess he's got a couple of assists, setting up Luke Tung for the opener and winning the penalty in the second half that Garvin Coughlin converted. Peterson sends it across to Aish, looks up, looks to fire in a shot, left footed shot, can't get any power, they're claiming a corner, but it'll be a goal kick. Royals huffing and puffing, but just struggling to create any uh, chances on goal in the second half. Newell flicks it on for Neil. Tung, huge work rate today, does well. Kashmir Technical, who leading into this match, said that they're taking a cup final approach into this game. Newell with a shot and sharp save. Well, almost came out of nowhere that one for the substitute striker, Tyler Muir. And it's a composed shot, but from a tight angle and couldn't beat Matt Ford, who had to be alert, hasn't had a lot to do as far as shot stopping goes in this match, but was alert to that one. Coughlin colliding with Boomer, but play on. is another player who's been very busy but well I was going to say Cooper was going to do well to get on the end of that but he did win it initially and felt that it might have been fouled they will have a throw in might see another change here
If the Royals want to try and claim a comeback victory here to try and keep the uh, shot at a National League spot alive, they're going to need to try and get another goal in a hurry. Little to lose for them, so let's see what they can do. Sean Cooper's got a good long throw on him, although you'd expect the likes of Stora and Schwartz to be able to mop up, so instead they try and craft something else, but Tyndall driving down the line and still going. Nicely done by the substitute and links up with another substitute, Caleb Cotton in the four shirt, the young midfielder, formerly with Nomads United, who's appeared in every match for Kashmir Technical so far in the Southern League. So a good player to come on. Connor Neal, most senior player in the lineup for the Royals, working hard to try and create something, but further frustration for his side and for coach Richard Murray there on the sideline. Wonderful play again from Coughlin. Wins another throw. So often doesn't even look like he's getting out of second or third gear. Schwartz sends it across the park. Cooper deals with it. Number eight, Raven August, another Royal substitute on the park. Nice wee one, two here. Clever touch, two. Is that McIsaac driving forward, but Boomer was alert to it. me Technical just looking to seal the deal, really. If they can find a fourth goal. Oh, and might see yellow the year perhaps Sean Cooper for blocking his opponent. Just looking to go past him. So Danny Kane will be able to get back to his feet. Cooper's name goes in the book. Inside the final 10 minutes here at Logan Park. A sudden league clash. So the Royals are going to miss out on a National League spot, but it's still been a strong season from them, putting pressure on the likes of Christchurch United and Kashmir Technical. Picking up a great victory over Kashmir Technical up in Christchurch a couple of months back. So look to them to hopefully improve even further next season. Some strong challenges in the middle of the park there. McIsaac driving forward and keeps the ball in and a yeah, free kick awarded. I think referee was initially looking to play an advantage but it's come back to the foul by Peterson and great spot for a free kick here. Tom Schwartz 
cap off a strong game by getting on the end of a cross here. For Yuya Taguchi. Swing this one in from a dangerous position. Does swing it in. Look at <laughs> well, Schwartz and Stora there desperately trying to get on the end of it, but all over their opponents. Caleb de Groot Green, another player who's played every match, and I think every minute for the Royals this season. And all the way back to Ford. Peterson still battling away, winning the ball there. A hopeful long ball. McIsaac's had a solid game, and now another substitute, Sam Richards, down the left flank, looking to find Coughlin. Look out. A couple of players up against him, but he still gets a shot away and can't find the net. Looks like it's taken a deflection. Oh, he just, just about put my mortgage on him, uh, finding a second goal there. Will be another corner for Kashmir Technical once again. Schwartz and Stora. <laughs> Schwartz signalling for the ball. And I think that's come off the back of De Kroot Green initially. Coughlin loses out this time. Stora still up there making a nuisance of himself. Coughlin with another effort, but side netting. Put a foot wrong. The young goalkeeper for Kashmir Technical. Great, of course, to see young players being given a chance, new rules in the season's National League, Regional, National League competitions, where well, instead of under 20 players uh, needing to be in the starting lineup, do have to play at least 10% of their available playing time. So it's pretty handy when you can bring in a 17-year-old goalkeeper to see out a match. Muir linking up with Cooper. May get the ball back here. And sends it across. Nicely cut out by Stora. He's been superb. Certainly helpful for a young goalkeeper to have a couple of centre backs with plenty of probably 30 years of playing experience between them. There's a corner for the Royals. Coughlin working hard to deny Hawkins' shot at goal, but Aish gets forward and oh. Fight on a shot, only side netting though.
Flicked on by Tyndall. Coughlin gets it back to him. Will he look to get it back again? What can he craft? Takes a moment. It can't be kept in there. So I think it's safe to say you can look forward to the likes of Garvin Coughlin lining up against the finest players from club sides in the Northern League and Central League in the upcoming National League Championship. Is there still a late consolation here for the Royals? Peterson gets into the box and opts not to shoot. And the player going down in the box there, I think, but swung back in. Schwartz handles it with a plom. And another counter attack for Kashmir Technical through Taguchi. Good effort there, though, from Youngster who's uh, just come on for the Royals. Hugh Jack, just recently turned 17. <laughs> nice turn from Hawkins, who's tried hard all game. And, well, just about... Found his captain there, was that a handball? Certainly an unintentional from Tyndall. Cottom's had plenty of energy since he's come on for the visitors. And he's making a challenge again on Ash, but he does well, and Peterson feeds it through looking for Jack, but can't quite link up. So we're into referees time here at Logan Park. Kashmir technical, well, wait and see, there could be some celebrations when the final whistle goes with sewing up a top two spot, but they may still even have designs on trying to rein in Christchurch United at the top of the table to try and claim the Southern League. Crosshurst United certainly in the box seat, undefeated, and the only points have dropped was in a draw to Kashmir Technical earlier in the season. Once again, Stora strong in the air. Nicely done there by Muir. He's still hungry to get another goal out of us, the Royals. Might look to go longer this time. Cooper does, sends it into the box. Raven August sends it across and here's Coughlin hungry to add to his tally instead lays it off to Cotton but tame effort Maybe just a bit of a tired ball there from Ivan Hawkins, who's worked hard but couldn't find his teammate Muir there. Kashmir technical captain, Andrew Storer. 
taking his time with the throw. Cribbing a few metres too. Good experience play. <laughs> Making a bit of a mockery there, isn't he? <laughs> Still going. <laughs> and <laughs> finally, a foul, foul throw called. Well, that was all a bit comical. And that's going to have to get called back to the frustration of the Royals because it took a deflection off the referee, Corey Mills, who couldn't get out of the way of that one. So these are funny situations these days, aren't they, with the drop balls, which I think are meant to be uncontested, and the Royals will look to try and craft the chance. Instead, once again, Coughlin on his way. Will he be unselfish this time? He looks up in front of him. Have a shot. He does. Look at that. What a clinical finish to cap it off for Kashmir Technical. Galvin Coughlin adds a second. There's been one man pulling all the strings today. And 22, no damn well who. Galvin Coughlin gets his second and kills the game off. Kashmir Technical. 4-1 up. been a strong performance from the Christchurch side. They knew that the Royals were up for this one today. They pushed them hard throughout the game, but it's a rather, well, unflattering scoreline in the end for the Royals, despite their efforts. But, well, really, Kashmir Technical, you could say, have controlled much of the game. Just be seconds to play, I think. Cashmere <laughs> Technical have certainly been finding the net plenty of times throughout the season. Averaging almost four goals a season. They've done that today. Ford claims that one. The Royals have conceded a quarter of their goals towards the end of matches. Another one today, and full time whistle blown by Corey Mills and Kashmir Technical claim an impressive 4 1 win over the Dunedin City Royals here at Logan Park in the Southern League. Brave effort from the Royals, but Kashmir Technical just a bit too classy and showing why they're going to be in the National League Championship, joining fellow Christchurch side Christchurch United in that in a few weeks' time. Still a couple of rounds to play in the Southern League. We'll have a look at the goals. And, well, there were three of them in the first half. The opener came after 20 minutes. Great counter-attack. Coughlin unleashing Aidan Barbarian, whose shot was saved. But then Luke Tung scored. Luke Tung gave away a penalty that Connor Neal smashed home. But a couple of minutes later, just before the half-time break, horror for the Royals as Matheson's shot was deflected in. In the second half, about 10 minutes gone in the second half, and Kashmir Technical were awarded a penalty, which Coughlin converted, and then right at the death. Look at that cool finish there to claim his second. He now has 26 goals in 15 matches in the Southern League. He'll be a threat when the National League Championship comes around. So I hope you've enjoyed the coverage today. Thanks for joining us. Make sure you keep tuning in to all the football action being broadcast live every weekend. Kate Shepard Cup action tomorrow. Chatham Cup action next weekend. Men's and Women's National League Championships just around the corner. From myself, Morgan Jarvis, and everyone else bringing you this broadcast, thank you and farewell from Logan Park in Dunedin.